monetary policy really does influence the economy. During the financial crisis that began in 2007, the Federal Reserve was able to help the economy by the way it implemented its monetary policy. During the crisis, the Fed intervened with strong measures. It dropped its target for the federal funds rate, which is a really important interest rate that influences other interest rates, all the way down to nearly 0%. It also created special forms of loans to banks and other financial institutions. And sometimes, it made loans directly to corporations and investors against good collateral. These are just a few of the actions the Fed took as it tried to keep the financial crisis from turning into a financial disaster. The financial crisis of 2008 and early 2009 uh, was certainly the worst financial crisis um, since the Great Depression and by some measures probably even worse than the Great Depression. Liquidity dried up. Nobody wanted to lend money to banks. Banks had no ca were short on cash and they couldn't get it. The role of the Fed in all the central banks around the world at the time was to lend money to the banks so that the liquidity was there that they could continue to function. And we had pushed the federal funds rate down to zero and didn't have any further to push it. Faced with a increasingly severe recession with the normal policy tool at its limit down at zero, what do you do? So what the Fed did in essence was act more directly in longer term lending markets to lower those interest rates by purchasing those securities. Uh, raising the prices and lowering the yields on those securities, and then doing that part of the monetary transmission mechanism, which we couldn't do in the normal way. In this regard, what it was trying to do was take uh, assets that banks had on their books that were not very liquid and provide them with an alternative source of liquidity. And this allowed banks to function more efficiently and it provided for more transactions and more flow throughout the markets. The second thing that the Fed attempted to do during the crisis was to help support key markets that would influence consumers, households, and investors. Markets that, say, would provide loans for automobiles or loans for credit cards, loans for student loans so that people could continue to go to school. The third thing that the Fed did during the crisis was it expanded its role um, in the sense of open market operations by engaging in some long, term, large-scale asset purchases. The typical way of setting monetary policy is to control the short-term interest rate, which our policy rate is the Fed funds rate. During the financial crisis, you know, to, we had to cut interest rates sharply, and we got the Fed funds rate down to essentially zero. Um, and then the question is, if you wanted to add more accommodation, you know, allow for even easier credit terms, what could the Fed do? And so we engaged in the large-scale asset purchase program, or what's more colloquially called quantitative easing. And what that do does is we go out and buy longer-term assets. And by taking out some of those longer-term assets, we're basically putting downward pressure on long-term interest rates. And by doing that, right, again, this is another way of add accommodation, add, you know, ease credit conditions so that we can support the economy and support, you know, growth going forward. I think actually we were pretty successful in uh, stemming the liquidity crunch, stopping it from, from being a problem. And you can see that in all of the standard market indicators that would suggest stress in those markets, they went back to more normal levels. And in, in fact, uh, much of the short-term lending that was impaired returned to normal kinds of activity.